one of our great leaders at the legislature is President Pro Tem, Senator T.J. Shope. And I sent him a list of questions and he's going to answer them. And the nice thing about Senator Shope is he's pretty upfront about the way things work. You do an awful lot here in Arizona, not just be president pro tem or chair the health committee. You've been working in Arizona for a long time. Um, but you've also you know, chosen to serve in public office. It obviously wasn't for the money. <laughs> um, so what motivated you to, to step up? Well, um, you know, first off, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity and, and a happy holiday season to everyone out uh, in the audience today. You can be doing a lot of things on a day like this, but you're here trying to get a handle on what we're doing in the state. So, um, you know, I'm a... Uh, third generation elected official, so uh, progressively in a higher and uh, more stressful position. Although I will say that uh, when my dad served 16 years as a mayor of Coolidge, uh, he, would, he had served one term as a school board member and I, I served 12 uh, years there. He always said I would serve another 16 years as a mayor before I serve another meeting as a school board member. <laughs> Because when you're dealing with people's kids, that's always a, just a little bit different. Uh, it's a lot more than just, you know, is the trash schedule okay, you know? So, um, but no, thing, it's, it's been a, a, a good time, I'd say. Obviously, some years are more stressful than others, but one of the best things about the legislature is that it doesn't matter if you're within the same two-year term block. Each session is remarkably different uh, every single year. And different personalities uh, come to the occasion based on the issue that you're dealing with. Um, and, you know, it's, it, it's a lot, there's a lot of people here that make it fun. And, you know, I see Mr. Kavanaugh up here. Obviously, the rate that was offered to be on stage was not high enough for a comedic performance by Mr. Kavanaugh today. <laughs> However, he still attended uh, and is still enjoyed his lunch. But people like, like uh, John make this enjoyable. I see uh, Ami Shah and, and, and Brian Fernandez in the back of the room there, the things that you bring to the table make the job interesting and, and you learn uh, from all of your colleagues. I will say that if you've never been to the legislature just to see how it works, um, and I'm sure that uh, uh, some of you, because I know some of you have, some of you work down there, but the reality is, is that we don't have a huge staff uh, to pull information from. So if there's an education issue, and even though uh, Representative Pollack made, and, and I may disagree on, on some policies, we can have a conversation, A, from a teaching perspective, and, and me from a school board, former school board perspective, on what's the best path forward uh, uh, to do something. And I can have those types of conversations because before we got there, and yes, you mentioned the pay, 24K a year, um, you know, it's, you, you, everybody either still does something for a living or they came from a place where they had a long career that allowed them to go ahead and get into public office and they have an expertise. So there's a lot of things that go into uh, uh, the job, but making it, uh, making it enjoyable to go in every day when you know that you have to be at odds with people, uh, you'd be shocked to know that I'd say about 90% of the things that we do there past on either a unanimous or with maybe only five or so dissenting votes because it truly is just the business of a state moving forward. Uh, do we fight like hell on the other 10% of things? You darn right we do. And uh, um, it's uh, always fun, especially from my perch on the dais of trying to keep things in order and in line and frankly, helping our senators get home to their spouses in a de decent amount of time because we all like to talk. Well, some of us do, I guess, but all of every, a lot of people like to talk and you have to get them in line. But, but no, I encourage you, if you're still uh, interested after this, talk to any one of us, come spend a day with us, hang out at the Capitol. Um, I think you'd find that, especially the group of folks that are here today, would love to have you, even if it's just for an hour or two, uh, to come on down and to see how things work. That would be awesome. And 
so with all of the things that you do, what's the most rewarding thing? If you had to pick one thing. Well, I think that um, I can tell you probably one of my most rewarding uh, uh, issues that I worked on was last year, my first year as a, a, a chair of health and human services, um, having the Alzheimer's Association come to me uh, so that Arizona become, could become the second state in the country with a dementia state plan uh, behind uh, another obvious candidate in Florida. We are huge importers of a uh, senior population as well as obviously having our own native born uh, senior population. It's an issue that's important to me. I, um, my great grandma suffered uh, the last 10 years of her life with dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, and I have uh, Parkinson's, the other neurological uh, horrible thing that happens to our fan friends and family on the other side of my family. So um, those are issues that are, that you know, that hit near and dear to you. So when you're able to at least feel like you're trying to do something and move things in the right direction so your friends and other people in the community may not at some point uh, have to go through what, with uh, what your family went through. I think those are the most rewarding uh, things you can possibly do. And I know that there are people in this room here today that are trying to move the needle in the right direction so that families uh, don't have to experience those types of things anymore. And all I can say is to the, uh, the nerds at the nerdery who are trying to figure all that out, I really wish you the best of luck because I, I know that it, it's not just a job, it's a, it's a calling uh, to be able to help solve the problems that exist uh, uh, like dementia and other, other uh, uh, diseases. Thank you. So we talked about money. Um, you know, as we move into 2024, it's going to be different than 2023. And, um, you know, we're facing a very different budget landscape. You've served in the legislature in times of plenty and in times of scarcity. What should we expect to see this session? Well, I can tell you that unlike other times um, where we've had scarcity in budget, the, I'm comforted by the fact that over the last few years, we really did a good job this past year, I think included, uh, of trying to make sure that our ongoing costs were kept to a minimum. And the one-time dollars, especially out of things like COVID money, ARPA, things like that, were kept to one-time spends. So, um, you know, our neighbors to the West are, are, I think, dealing with a little bit of a different situation with their $35 billion deficit, which I think is right around 30% of their entire budget. It, we're, we're looking at something, when I first got to the legislature, I think our budgets were right around the area of about $9 billion, $10 billion around there. Um, an $800 million deficit would be crippling to the next legislature to try to figure out how you're going to solve it. An $800 million deficit it, with a budget of around $17 billion is manageable. Uh, there are a lot of things that we can do. Um, and a lot of things that, for example, in the field of transportation that we were able to uh, pick up good wins last year that potentially, look, we can even look at deferring those out a few, a couple years. Um, and frankly, with the, I've spoken to folks in the construction field with the amount of activity. If you look at the Broadway Curve project, if you look at the I-17 project, the upcoming I-10 uh, project uh, between Cass Grant and Phoenix, there's almost like a, a lack of workers to accomplish those things anyway. So a deferral of some of those projects is pro was probably going to happen anyway, um, just because uh, there aren't enough bodies to go around. But uh, the reality is, is that there are a number of things, uh, I think, in the toolbox this time around. And we've already uh, begun going line item by line item about what are the, our priorities to protect over the next couple years are. And I have no doubt um, that the governor's office has been doing the same. So I, I feel like the goal, as it is every year, would be to have something uh, sooner rather than later. And I, it's not lost on, on me, uh, being in one of the more competitive districts, that it's also an election year. So the faster we can get the hell out of there is probably a good thing for all of us. But I think overall, look, I, it's, you're going to hear numbers thrown out uh, over the next couple months. 
that do sound probably scary if you're not familiar with where we were just even 10 years ago. So I would, I would say, look, this is something that, uh, that we can handle and not that it will be easy and not that there won't be difficult decisions to be made, but it's something that can be handled um, uh, in the upcoming year and in the next year as well. The good news is that on the back end, we still show an ongoing uh, uh, surplus uh, in that, that third year when we budget out for three years. And we, we, so this is something where there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It's a blip on the radar. And I would, I would venture to guess, if you looked around the country, uh, there are gonna be a lot of states dealing with this same exact thing. It's not the economic situation of the country, it being what it has been over the last couple of years. And I know that there are some barometers that are moving in a positive direction. We have to keep hoping that they do. Uh, and, and, but I do think that for the most part, you're gonna see several, if not an overwhelming majority of states kind of in that same situation of a soft deficit that they have to go ahead and peel away. Thank you. And so sometimes we have policies that have clocks ticking on them. And Proposition 123, which brought you know, much needed funding to our teachers, um, is one of those. Um, I read about a um, proposal by Democrat or Republican leadership talking about Prop 123. Any updates? So the update is, is that look, nobody mo nothing moves government like a cliff, all right? So you know that's in front of you. You're gonna go ahead and, and decide, well, I haven't been doing anything about this for a while. I guess I ought to. Um, but um, the reality is, is that, uh, look, I think both sides of the aisle have committed to putting additional dollars in K-12 and the, our budgets that we have passed have shown that uh, in the last several years. and with the same with this we've known that this is coming up uh and uh, you know i have no doubt and i know i've spoken to senator bennett uh who chairs the uh, education committee in the senate uh and they are coming up with the what will be the new uh prop one two three plan um and i have no doubt that we're going to get that done because i think the voters of this state have a commitment to education uh and i think we have shown because of the budgets we have passed that we do too so uh, my hope is we'll go ahead and come together on that. Uh, once again, earlier uh, rather than later is my hope. Just to give some idea and some semblance that, uh, you know, that we can put that behind us and then it will be much like Prop 400 in the last session. It'll be up to the voters at that point uh, to, to make that decision. But I, I think that you're going to see uh, our hope anyway is to give our educators uh, a significant uh, pay increase, uh, much like we've done in the past. And I, I have no doubt that the uh, voters of the state will see that that is something that we ought to be doing. Um, you know, I, we've been on, I think this is my 11th, uh, this past year was my 11th budget that I voted on, and we have consistently added more dollars uh, to that line item. And I have no reason to believe that we won't do it again. So that's, that's the only way I can say, rest assured, it's going to happen in one way, shape, or form. But the details are still uh, being hammered out as far as uh, what that ballot measure will look like. So, you know, beyond K through 12, we have a health care shortage, um, which means that we are going to be needing to educate more nurses, allied health professionals, and doctors. Um, ABOR, you know, has committed $30 million to support new medical schools. In this environment, is that going to be a tough sell? Well, I think, first off, does anybody know of any field that doesn't have a workforce shortage right now? I mean, raise your hand if you do. I'd like to hear it because I keep on saying everybody does. And I, I had two or three tours yesterday in different, completely different fields, early childhood development, uh, uh, a recycling entity in, in, in LD16 uh, and all of them, it doesn't matter whether it's blue collar or white collar, it's like, you know, we need more people in, in here working and doing something. Um, specifically to the medical schools, I'd ask for you, if you're not familiar, uh, I would hope that, the, I would expect in this room, many are familiar with what's going on and what has been proposed by Arizona State and, and Arizona. 
uh, as, or in northern Arizona, I mean, uh, at the legislature. I would encourage you, I think our first health committee meeting um, this year, we will have presentations by both universities um, to go ahead and hear what their plan is uh, as, far as, as far as that. I think that we're going to have to get creative, though, if we're going to go ahead and, and, and come up with the dollars. And it may not be from a traditional, uh, you know, budgetary sense of, of finding that, at least initially. Um, so if that's something that we really want to get started right away, which I know that the need is right away. Uh, I've, I've asked uh, both universities to come up uh, with some other creative ways to at least get it kick-started in the initial phases with the knowledge that, you know, we're going to go ahead and get there uh, when we have a more stable uh, uh, budget fund, uh, which would hopefully be just in a couple of years. But it is, but tune in. It'll be fun. Janae Champ is my vice chair on that committee. Uh, she keeps me in line there and keeps the meeting rolling. If, you're, if you'd like to even be there in person, it's always, it's always good to actually see uh, the slides yourself and, and what they're presenting. But I think it's going to be very positive. I'm very excited for that both. I, I toured most recently up at NAU. Um, and I can tell you that they're doing great things, especially in rural Arizona especially in our Native American uh, uh, communities. And, uh, you know, their focus has been in, in those spots. And, and I really, really, after seeing some of the facilities, some of the, the other uh, things that they're doing, uh, they need help and, and probably struggle more than the other two universities. So I hope that we're able to go ahead and come up with a plan, uh, especially there, but also at ASU. Thank you. And um, you, you mentioned the health committee, and I'm going to speed things up here because I know we're, com we're running out of time. Um, first of all, I want to thank you. You have three bills that you are either sponsoring or co-sponsoring that are really, really important. Um, you know, the first one is um, fentanyl testing in our hospitals when someone presents. A very simple urine test can make the difference on treating or not treating a patient in the right way. Our large hospitals all do that test automatically. Our smaller hospitals don't necessarily have the protocols. And so setting up that framework, thank you for doing that because we still have a huge fentanyl problem here. Um, innovation sometimes moves faster than policy. And um, we now have drugs and, and treatments for Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, but we have to be able to test for it sooner and Senator Shope shared with me that he is going to be sponsoring a bill to, to work on getting that added to our newborn screening panel. And that will change the lives of young people for, you know, for their whole life if we get it early. Well, I think the, the key there just to, is any other, any other uh, health issue, especially if we can have a test at the youngest age possible to determine whether somebody is susceptible and or may already have, then we can begin treat, uh, treatment as soon as possible. It gives that uh, child uh, an opportunity at life uh, and an opportunity uh, to go ahead and, and, and be successful in, in the way that they can. And I'd like to give a shout out to uh, my wife's over there in the green sweater, Melissa. She's been probably the biggest proponent after sitting down with a woman named Shirley Kim from who brought the bill uh, forward to me at uh, one of the conferences I was at this summer um, and, and really have harped on. This is something that we, we really need to do. We really need to make sure that we're setting up our, our medical professionals to be successful when they're treating uh, our children. Uh, we all know that it's not just the child that is going to be going through uh, a, a tough time. A parent may have to go ahead and leave employment. Uh, you know, you talk about workforce, and you've been talking about just the uh, production level and things like that. That takes one person out of production, if not more, uh, if that type of uh, diagnosis isn't handled uh, correctly early on. So that's always going to be a goal. I, I, I do enjoy um, when I hear that innovation has outpaced policy because it means that while there are people in this room that are actually working on the big problems, many of them 
people like me have very little knowledge uh, of, and it's been a wonderful learning curve, uh, even uh, uh, to learn about Deshane's, and and hopefully we can get something done there. Well, thank you, because you know, as we say very often, patients are waiting for us yeah. to get this done, and. Um, so that that takes us to the two hundred million dollar question. Um, <laughs> Earn your twenty four k. And it, because I, you know, talk with Senator Kavanaugh, and we talk with Representative Livingston, and we talk with Senator Show. We understand that this is not the year to get $200 million. Although if you find a creative thing for the university, you could share that with us. Well, I think the key right now is to, uh, if you have relatives that live elsewhere or if you reside elsewhere, if you're going to make purchases, I would encourage you to do them in Arizona. Our TPT, our sales tax would greatly appreciate it. And yes. then we could find $200 million potentially. That's right. so. so, but the... Um, but the important thing is that we do something because there are philanthropists in this room who were watching what we were doing and they got really excited when it passed the Senate at $50 million. They were even pleased when it passed House appropriations at $10 million and then they were very disappointed um, when it didn't get to the final governor's signature. So, um, you know, it's so important to keep in mind that this is a signal to the rest of the state and to the counties and to the cities that the state is committed to this. So I think anything that you all can do to help us send the right signal is important. And it's duly noted. I mean, I think that, you know, am I going to come up here and I think that uh, Joan did a good job. I generally try not to blow smoke or anything like that I, I you know it, we do have a situation right now where it does there isn't going to be a 200 million dollars right. I mean that's just reality uh, however we continue to go ahead and highlight how important this is we will have a bill uh, it's I believe I texted my assistant this morning or after we spoke just a little while ago excuse me and so I, I do know that there's something on my desk so I'll be going over to take a look at it and make sure it's in the way we want to introduce it, but hopefully either today or Monday we'll at least have a bill number uh, for everyone to, to see. Uh, same with Duchesne. Uh, so there'll be a couple of ones that I'm sure you all will want to track. But I want to say this, even if that number isn't as high as we want it to be, um, the commitment is there from me personally that we will continue working on this. Um, I know how important it is. I love the fact that Arizona over the last you know, couple decades, and John Cavanaugh was given kudos earlier for creating the program, uh, or at least having the legislation to create the program. I love that we are an innovation hub now. And frankly, it's things like that. It's the other ways that we've been able to grow Arizona's economy, uh, whether it's healthcare or semiconductors or other, uh, other entities that are allowing us to probably weather a uh, recessionary period better than just about anybody else because we're not just tied to real estate anymore. We have diversified the economy and we should all be happy about that because we've all had a, a part in it. Uh, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and keep working at it. So I hope to, to have that bill number at least to, to Joan by uh, this afternoon or Monday at the latest. Awesome. So then we can start getting people signing in to support it. And um, I know we ran a couple minutes over. Um, please join me in thanking Senator Shope. <laughs> and I want to thank all of you for being here today. I invite you to join us at the Capitol. We are going to be having Arizona Bioscience Day at the Capitol. We're going to be knocking on everybody's doors. We're going to take them into committees so they can see how the process works. Um, and we're going to make sure that they all know how to use requests to speak so you know what they think. But again, the people in this room 
are changing lives. You are saving lives. You are creating great jobs. You're growing the biosciences in Arizona and you are finding answers to things that we don't have answers for yet. But we will. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Have a wonderful year. Thank you.